Okay, welcome back everyone to episode eight, I believe. Um, in this episode, we're gonna be adding our player um, Dokimons, and then we're also going to be adding the attacks functionality. So the first thing we wanna do is go into our battle script. So over here, we're gonna go into our battle script and we're gonna add the Dokimons into our player node here. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to hide all the menus. And I'll show you why we do that in a second. But we're going to hide all the menus. So we're going to hide the UI menu, the um, switch menu, and the fight menu. Okay? And then we're going to grab focus of the fight. Let's go over here. We'll say grab focus of the fight. Oh, we actually already do that over here. So let's take this out. And we want to do this before we grab focus. Doesn't really matter, actually. But in this case, that's what we're going to do. Now, we're going to await two seconds. And I'll show you why we do this in a minute. But it's basically for um, dramatic game effect because we don't want the players, the enemy spawning as at the same time as the player. We want to get the enemy spawning first and then the player's uh, Dokimon just so it has that little flare in the game. If you want to take this out, you totally can. Um, but that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, next to spawn our Dokimon, we have to for loop inside of our Dokimon. Okay. Now, all we have to do is say bear mon temp is equal to the scene dot instantiate. Now, if you remember in our game here, we have we have preloaded our scene of our Dokimon. So we have pink mon, green mon, and if we go down here, we have purple mon. So here in our game, we've added the pink mon, right? So we have access to the pink mon. So let's load that in by adding it and instantiating it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we actually name it to what the name is okay now sometimes because when we instantiate something the name kind of gets messed up but that's okay we're just going to rename it and then we're going to hide it now i'll show you why we hide it because we're going to actually have several dokimons in our player node but um i'll show you that in a minute but we want to hide all of them but then we're going to show the first one so let's also add that dokimon now so we'll go into the player so right here make sure it's case sensitive and that's it that's how we spawn all our Dokimons, okay? Now, if you want to limit this, I actually recommend you limit this. Um, we'll have errors later on once we add the inventory and stuff. So you're going to have to edit this. But essentially, you only want to spawn, say, the first four or whatever you like. So it's up to you on how you want to edit your game. But this is basically where the spawning happens. So it's going to go through all the Dokimons that we have. But just keep in mind, we only have like three attacks. We only Our Switch will only have... Um, three Dokimons. So that's up to you and how you want to do that. And um, I'll let you guys decide. Okay. So next up, we're going to actually show our first Dokimon. So to do that, all we have to do is get access to our player node up here. And then we're going to get the first child and show it. And that's it. That's how we show the first Dokimon. So we're going to show the first Dokimon that we have in our game. And then we're going to show the menu. Okay. Now, the reason we do this, the reason we hide everything is because I want to not give access to the, the player access to the menu before the Dokimon is spawned, right? Because here we're waiting. Now, if you, in your game, you're not waiting, you don't need any of this. You don't need to hide and then show it later. But um, this is how I found it gives the game a bit of uh, fun, I, I suppose you can say. It makes the game a bit more interactive. So now if I play, hopefully I don't get an error. After a second, it'll spawn mine. There it is. And I can fight and whatever. So let's try one more time. Let me show it. Here we can see the menu is not showing until my menu, my Dokimon spawns. So you can edit this to whatever you like, one second, two seconds, whatever. Um, the reason I do two actually is because here, when I spawn, the Dokimon's already spawning in. And so that two seconds is basically buffer for this. So if you want, you can also have another await up here. That's one second. It's whatever. It's up to you guys. I, I recommend you just play around with the timers um, and see what you like and what works. Okay. All right, let's get into the attacks. So this is going to be fun. We're going to get into attack nodes and um, signals. So the signal, we're going to go into the attack one. Okay, let's close these other menus so we don't get confused. So attack one, let's go to the scripts, close all. And in here, the attack one, we're going to say pressed. We're going to attach it to the UI, but we're going to remove this number one. And now this is the fun part. I might actually 
that's fine. We'll put it in the UI and I'll edit it as we go along. So now we're going to have the advanced feature. Then we're going to go to int and add an extra call argument. We're going to add it and argument one will be zero. Let's connect this. Let me actually double check. Yeah, it's bind zero. And now we'll do the same thing for this. But this guy is going to be two. And then we have to remove the three. And we'll add it to the UI one more time. So connect it. And ooh, it did not change. That's interesting. So sometimes that happens. If that happens, we'll just disconnect it. We'll erase this function. We'll go back to the pressed. And we'll add in this guy. So we'll say two. And then remove that. Cool. Whoops. And there it is. Cool. So we've attached this with that argument. And then we'll go to attack two. And let's add the argument one. Now keep in mind that this is attack one is zero, attack two is one, attack three is two, right? Because we always start from zero in coding. And I think that's it. So we attach this to the UI and oh, make sure we remove that too, connect it. And here we go. Now, what does this extra argument do? Well, it allows us to pass through an argument. So let's actually print this and see what we get. So let's print argument. Let's play. Let's go into our battle. And let's go into our fight section. So fight and blast. And you should see we printed zero. What if I click impact? Oh, nothing's happening. If I click clash, it's printing one. Let's see why impact is not working. Let's see. Um, should be attack three. Let's see why this guy is not working. It should be working. There is a chance. I think I had this issue before. I don't remember what the problem was. Let's try something. Let's try clicking with. Hmm. Interesting. OK, I'll figure out why that's not exactly working later. But for now, we'll keep going into the attacks and how that works. So in our attack, we want to first check to see if the target is our monster. So what do I mean by this? Well, in our game global thing here, we have target. Where did it go? Target. Here we go. So we're going to get access to this target and see if it's monster. If it is, then we're going to focus the monster. So I'm going to show you how to focus the monster. And then after that, you can do whatever else. So here we say if the game dot selected Pokemon's at selected, right? Because we have selected here. Oh, you know what? That's why. Hold on. I figured it out. Hold on, guys. Let's uh, copy paste this, remove this. Let's go back to our attack three and disconnect this. Go to pressed, go to UI, remove that and add the argument two. And there we go. Okay, now this should work. That's why I connected it to the wrong script. And now we print two. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So now in here in our UI script, we're gonna have to get parent dot selected, get the attacks. So we're going to go to the extra argument because the extra argument allows us to know which attack we're using, right? And then we're going to say if it's equal to monster, then we're going to attack the monster, right? And we do that by, first of all, we have to get access to our dictionary of the attacks. So we do that by saying get parent dot selected attacks. Now we have created a copy of our dictionary of the attacks, okay? Now what we can do now, the reason I do this is because it just makes the code a bit less messy. Okay, let me add a few spaces here. And here, we're going to get access to the enemy. And here's where we're going to actually attack them. Now, if we add more enemies, we're going to get the access to the first one and hit and say dot hit, temp dictionary, extra argument, name. And then we're also going to pass through the damage. Because if you remember in our enemies, in our monsters, Pink bond, for example, we have access, we have this function hit. Now hit dot it passes through the animation, the name, and then the damage, the amount of damage. Right? So we have to make sure that in our UI, in our attack, we do that. So hit has the name of the animation, and then it also has the damage. Right. So now make sure that the name is the same. Right. So we have to make sure that the name is the same, otherwise it won't show that animation. Now what we can do here is say. We're going to edit the action bar. So let's actually get access to that. So we're going to say at the action, we're going to say text your, the name of the attack, has attacked for 
this amount of damage and then HP. Okay. Now remember we have te the temp dictionary that we made and that's it. Now we're going to create a new function called monster attack. Now this one is actually going to exist in the get parent. So the main function and we're going to put it why is this not working? Selected. Uh, we have to say get parent dot selected. Say get parent dot selected, and that should work. Cool. Now we're gonna make this function called monster turn, and we're gonna put it in here into the battle. Okay. So let's go over. Let's put it right under the ready function. Actually, no. Let's put it on the very bottom. Uh, function monster turn, and we'll pass for now. We'll do the monster turn in the next episode. But that is pretty much it. So let's go to the Play. Let's play. Let's try attacking our monster. Let's see if it works. So fight and let's blast. And you can see the animations playing. It's very slow, but that's okay. And I think it's looping, but that's okay. It pretty much works. So it says your pink one is attacked for 10 HP. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Let me actually change a few things. So let's scale this to three and then this to three. So our Dokimons are a lot bigger. I think I did that already, but um, that's okay. The monster UI will do in the next video. Just because, um, as you can see, the attack's working, but the battle, it's, it's not, it doesn't look like it's working because we haven't up, we're not updating the monster UI. But we'll do that in, we can actually check to see if that's working by going over here. You can see our Dokimon's a lot bigger now. And it's a blast. If we go to the remote and access our monster, which is over here, you can go to the pink one. We can see that the health is at 10 and level four. I don't remember what the health should actually go down. I'm not sure why it's not going down. It's pretty interesting. Oh, here we go. Health is now zero. So negative 10. If I click again, it should be negative 20. And we'll add on to it as we go along. But it now works, so that's cool. Um, I'll be showing you guys the Monster UI next turn and some other things, hopefully. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.